I'm going to do a video here today on replacing the spark plugs in my 1990 Suzuki VX800. Now I'm going to start this in a minute here and this may not be the cause of this problem but uh, I tend to shift gears in around the 4 to 5 range unless I'm in a real hurry and uh, this bike kind of tends to bog out in around there so I'm going to start this up and hopefully it'll do it. Uh, it does kind of uh, a spinning so we'll see if it does it. Uh, I'm sure so I just came off the highway. This uh, bike is nicely warmed up. Uh, no carbon or anything like that in it. I've, I've uh, had it for some good runs out on the highway. Now I'm just going to show you what I mean. I'm going to give her a little petrol here. So as I say, this bike is uh, warmed up. Shouldn't be any reason for it to be spitting like that, so step number one, we'll change the spark plugs. Won't do any harm, might fix the problem. To replace the plugs in this bike, unfortunately, the tank has to come off. The cylinders don't point out here where I can access the spark plugs. Here's a uh, spark plug wire right there. So to get to that, I'm gonna have to take the fuel tank off. And to get the fuel tank off, First step, remove the seat. Now, removing the seat on this bike, pretty straightforward process. Stick the key in there, turn it, that'll release the latch up above. Seat slides right off. And I'm going to turn the fuel from on to off. Next, I'm going to remove this clamp at the end of the tank that holds the fuel tank in place. 10 millimeter bolts in this case. Now, if you had this style of bike, when you remove this, try to keep the uh, clamp and the rubber bushings in the place in the manner that they came off just because it might get a little confusing if you go to put them back on. I'll show you what I mean here. I always just take it off and lay it aside keeping the, the rubber bushings that are underneath the bolts in place. If you know what I mean. It's kind of like I'll take it off like that and then, then just lay that aside as it is there now so then you don't get confused as to how those were laid out. So now the tank, the fuel tank, is loose down here on this side. Now I'm going to release the side fairings, which just pull out. So very carefully, making sure not to break anything. They just pull out like that. And then there's a Phillips screw right there that I'm going to remove. Same deal on the other side. I go over here, pull that fairing below the tank off. Might be a little stubborn, just wiggle it back and forth, comes off like that, and another Phillips screw there. So I removed the Phillips head screw over here. You can see that fairing is just flopping around there. Take this one off. Before you know it, we're going to have easy access to the tank here. Now again, there's a bushing there. Be careful not to knock it out of place. So as we can see now these fairings are away from the tank, we're going to get access to this to remove it. So now that we have access to the bottom of the tank, as I lift it, hopefully this will show up on the camera, there's a clip right here. A little pair of needle nose pliers would be good for removing that, but it's actually uh, it's got a fairly good area to grip it there. Put some cloths or something to safely catch the fuel. We turned off the fuel, but it's going to be a little bit left in that line. And then I pull that fuel line off of there. Safely dispose of those cloths afterwards. And now the tank is fully released on the end towards the back of the bike. So now we can remove the tank. The trick here is simply just to pull up at the back of it. Like so, 
and then pull the tank towards the back because it slides on up here like so. And be very careful where you put that because you won't, don't want to scratch your nice fuel tank. Now, if I was sitting on the bike, this would be the left side spark plug. I'm going to take this rubber grommet off of here. We'll put it back into place. That just slides off, gives us a little extra room to get to that spark plug. So here, I think you can see that. Now that we got that rubber grommet off, gives you a little extra room to get your fingers in there and get that spark plug wire off. So there's the plug wire. Take that, set it aside. Gonna use the spark plug wrench that came with the bike. It's in the toolkit, which on this bike is under the seat. Slide that over the spark plug, kind of move it around until I'm sure that it's caught the plug properly. Now, I think there was a tool in the kit for that, but at any rate, I lost it. So I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna stick my finger down in there on top of that spark plug wrench just to kind of keep it straight. I don't want that going on an angle. And then I'm gonna take my 17 millimeter wrench and go in lefty loosey or counterclockwise. Release that. And be careful there because the last thing you want is if that plug is really tight. You do not want to strip that. Anyway, it shouldn't be. And there we go. I'm just going to keep the camera running here for a moment. We'll have a look at this plug. The bike uh, normally runs really nice, so that spinning and everything that's going on, I suspect. It's been a while since the plugs were changed in this. Yeah, and they're definitely due. It's pretty corroded up there. A lot of carbon. But I had this up for a couple of really good runs on the highway and, and blew any amount of carbon that should have been in it out. So, anyway... We'll change those plugs. So whenever I'm replacing spark plugs, I'm ridiculously paranoid because the last thing you want to do is put the wrong spark plug in an engine. I always have visions of somehow getting the wrong plug and that cylinder when it starts popping up in the engine hits the top of that plug or something like that. Anyway, do the last little double check of what we got here. The old one is NGK in this case, and there's the numbers for it DPR 8EIX 9. I take the new one, same thing. So now I feel a little better. Never hurts to double check you got the right plug. I always put a little anti-seize compound on the thread of the spark plugs for next time. This is optional, up to yourself. Anything goes wrong, don't say backyard Mac told you to do it. But I'll always make sure that I stay away from the end of the plug. I do not want any of that getting down in the cylinder. And I'm going to remove some of that because once it threads in you, you don't need a whole lot. But it'll make life a little easier for you next time when they're coming out. Gonna slide the spark plug into the wrench like so, push it down in there, and then very carefully slide that down. Now, trying to hold that as straight as I can with my fingers because I do not want to cross thread this. If it starts to protest as you're turning it in, stop doing it. Because if you cross thread a spark plug, you, you're going to damage those threads in the engine, and that's not good. So as you can see, that's actually going finger tight there. So let's turn that down. Now, 
Unfortunately, I can't get a torque wrench in that space. I don't have a torque wrench that's small enough to do that. And I personally believe I'd rather have a spark plug a little bit loose, because you can always tighten it back up, than too tight. So I'm going to take my 17 millimeter wrench, just gently start to apply a bit of pressure there. Okay. I can see that's turning fine now. I got it down close. There's a little washer on the end of it that will crush a little bit there. Oops, slid off. So I'm going to try to keep that straight. And I'm going to push it down, push the wrench down again, make, just to make sure it's on there good. Push the down and turn. And like I say, I'm not going to get too aggressive if I find that anything doesn't seem to be working right I'll tighten that up again but that's about how tight I'm going to put that I can feel that that washer is seated there take that back out put my plug wire on it slide that back in there it's pretty limited space here there we go. Should hear a click when we push it down. Now if I try to pull gently back up, it's not coming. And push it down one more time. So that plug has been replaced. Now we're on the other side of the bike. Pull out the spark plug wire. Drop the spark plug wrench down over the spark plug, push it down, try to turn it to make sure it's over the plug. Take your wrench, try to hold that spark plug wrench down to make sure it's not moving around too much. Same routine as the same side, or same routine as the other side. And then lefty loosey, or counterclockwise to release. The old spark plug. By the way, uh, gap these plugs. I got a video on gapping spark plugs. There's the old one. Take that out. I've already gapped them. Put the new one. Again, same routine as the other side. Put the new one into your plug wrench. Little dab of antices over the threads. Drop the plug into place in the cylinder. Same routine again. Turn it on clockwise. Tighten it in. Just like we said before, it's like a little washer down at the bottom of it. You can kind of feel as that starts to get compressed. And again, we're not going to get too aggressive. We can always go back and tighten it up if we feel that it's that it needs us. Put the spark plug wire back on there. Push it down. Jiggle it a bit to make sure it's on there. Slide that rubber grommet back into place. I actually forgot to tape that part, but do that at this point. We're going to put the tank back in place. The front of it is going to slide on there. See if I can get this on camera. The front part, that hook there, will slide on towards the front of the bike, right there. Hopefully you can see that. As I move it, I can tell that it's seated properly in there. in the front. Now we take our fuel line, put that back onto the output of the tank, make sure it goes all the way down in there, and then move our little clamp up over the end of the fuel line there. 
and get that back in place. Then we take our hold down clamp for the tank, which we were careful to not disassemble. This lightly start to turn one bolt into place, then the other. Take our socket. Righty tighty. Oops. And you know the routine from there. Basically just a little at a time each side. Take that down into place. We're gonna snap our fairings back into place here. And over here on the right side of the bike. Then put our Phillips head screws in there. I have the Phillips head screws in place. Now I'm going to take the front of the seat, the hook that's there, slide that into place like so, push it down the back, and you probably heard that click into place. Okay, I just started it up. I'm going to take it out on the highway, give it a little run, see how it performs. That's it for this video.